Hey everyone, today I'd like to thank the folks at Elite Engineering for sending me one of their uh, catch cans to install on my truck. Today I'm doing a review on the E2 catch can. This has uh, been newly redesigned and this is the latest generation. You can see here I already have it mounted in the place that I'm going to be uh, keeping it. More on that in the future. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and start taking off the intake tube and running our hoses to bring them all back to this location so that we can properly install the catch can. So as you can see here, we have a, an OEM intake tube and uh, all the OEM uh, supplied connections to the valve covers and whatnot. The first step is removing the intake tube and it's relatively easy. It's just a couple of clamps, one there and one here. And you can use a flathead screwdriver to remove those. Also attached are these two hoses here and here. And these just clip. You see the gray part can just be depressed with your thumb and pulled off of the tube and it clips onto this piece of the tube right here. So these are easy to do with pretty much one hand and they just pop right off. We will later remove these from the valve covers um, but for now you can just swing them out of the way and I'm going to go ahead and unclamp the intake tube from here and from over there. Once you have this removed, just go ahead and set it off to the side. Next what we want to do is remove these two hoses from the valve covers. There's one on the driver's side which comes off just by depressing the gray clip. And then there's also one on the passenger side comes off the same way. You can save these pieces. I'm not sure at this point if we're gonna reuse them, but it's always a good idea to hold on to them. Now the next thing we need to do is remove the factory PCV hose. On the 5.3 liter V8, which is what we have in front of us, it is located right underneath the throttle body. There's one connection here, and if you follow that hose back, it goes along the valley cover here, and it continues back about midway on the intake manifold. So to remove that, it's got those same gray clips. These ones are a little smaller, and if your engine's hot, you may want to wait a bit to do it because that spot does get a little warm. You can just stick your hand in there, push the gray clip, and I have this one removed. And so this hose then can be turned, fish it through these wires here, just kind of turns. I'm just basically rotating it about 90 or so degrees so that the back one, I can get to the clip on it. I'm trying my best to get back here. It's a little tough with one hand, but that is the piece right there where the light is shining with that white stripe. That is where we're going to be pulling the hose off of. And it also has one of those clips, but this one is easier if you turn this hose, it's exposed once you turn this all the way around. So you're just basically rotating it and it'll spin on its piece back here. And then you can press the gray clip and pop off the hose and pull it out. So that's what that looks like. When it's all attached, it's sitting in there like this on the motor. You undo this one on the bottom first. Then you're just rotating the piece so that that back clip becomes exposed. And then you can get your finger or a screwdriver in there to hold in that clip and pop it loose and then remove it from the spot. If you have a 4.3 liter V6 or a 6.2 liter V8, your PCV hose is in a slightly different location. I'm going to post up images of those engines in the video right now to show those locations. But otherwise, the, the installation of a catch can is exactly the same. Just make sure you get the right connections. So now's a good time to talk about where you want to install your catch can. There are is no one perfect spot. I tend to like to put the catch can towards the front of the engine bay just so it's easier to maintain. Just need a stool to get in and uh, unscrew. There has been some people to mount it on that bolt on the left side of the brake booster and there has been some people using this bolt here on the radiator. I went with a new option. On the back side of the radiator cover shroud here there are some pre-drilled holes all along the top. You can see one here and there is one here where I have this bolt right now. All you need to do is pop off the clips for the top of the radiator shroud and you can get access to these bolts relatively easy. There's that one, there's the one there, and then just slightly back, it's not too far, is the one here. So then I just had a bolt laying around that I fed through and I tightened it on with a nut and uh, a couple of washers, and I found this to be a really nice solid spot for the catch can to be mounted. It's easy to get to, it's not touching anything, there is plenty of clearance when the hood closes, I checked. I think that is a new uh, new spot that most people can utilize. When you purchase the catch can from Elite, you can choose to have an optional second exit port. Typically, it's just gonna have one exit port and one intake port. For right now, 
We're going to concentrate on just the single intake port and a single exhaust port installation and then I'll show you how the, the second exhaust port gets hooked up towards the end. So this middle one gets connected to the location underneath the throttle body right there, that connection that we took off. That is coming, that is the crankcase vent. So you're going to attach your hose there, route it accordingly and run it back to the center fitting on a catch can. The exhaust port is going to run back to the middle of the intake manifold or that other port is. And that effectively is all that is need to be done for a single intake and a single exhaust port catch can. So I'm going to go ahead and start hooking those up. You're going to want to attach your hoses to the catch can first and then run them to their locations just to make it easier on yourself. Um, with these new type of ferrule fittings, I made a separate video showing you how to attach those. There's a link in the description and there's also going to be a box right up here in the right hand corner that will show you how to attach those fittings. So go ahead and attach those and uh, then we can move on to where they go on the engine. Once you have the hose hooked up you can go ahead and fish it down through these wire, through these other tubes and get it close to where it's going to be sitting and uh, cut your two uh, to the right length. Now always give yourself a little bit of extra. You can always go back and cut more but if you cut too short you're gonna have to get a new piece of hose. So now they also give you these nice spring clips that you can use to secure your tubing. So make sure you slide that on your hose before you slide it over the port underneath the throttle body. Then you can use a pair of pliers and fish it down. So now I have the intake port on the can connected down to the crankcase vent which is right down there and you can see I used one of the clamps supplied to secure it. Now these uh, barbs on this are just plastic so you need to be very careful when you're sliding your hosing over them. You can break them off and then uh, you may be uh, in trouble. Next we're going to be hooking up this exhaust port on the can. This is going to also get a check valve which is supplied and it's going to be basically attached right here and secured with the clamps. There is an arrow on these and the arrow needs to be pointing away from the can. It's hard to pick up but you can just barely make it out. So that means the check valve needs to be facing away from the can and hooked up to the tubing like so. And this is then going to go to that other connection on the intake manifold which is buried underneath all of those cables. So you can see down there with that little clamp that's where it's connected. And I left the long run of hose, fished it back to here and it will come back and connect to that check valve. So if your catch can is just a single intake and a single outtake, you're basically done. That's all there is to it. Next I'm going to show you how to hook in the clean side separator. With the addition of the clean side separator, you're no longer going to be using these vents on the valve covers. So all you have to do is use the supplied hosing to bridge these two connections. So this is as easy as bridging these two vents with the hose. I had some small hose clamps laying around that I used to secure them but that's not 100% necessary. And your next step is to actually remove your oil filler cap and I would hold on to it but at this point you're no longer going to need it anymore. So then you get your clean side separator and it'll screw in exactly like your oil filler cap. You just need to find the grooves and give it a twist and it's in. When you go to change oil you don't have to remove that whole thing. It, this just will slide out like so. There are two o-rings on there so and then this will just slide down. So next we need to get our intake tube back installed. Now they give you this adapter. You're just going to slide this right onto this guy right here and then you're going to connect it with a hose down here. And once you have your adapter on you can attach your hose to the separator and that part is done. Now you also need to cap off this other side of your intake tube and they install a cap that you can uh, insert right on that edge. And that goes on just like so. Now if your can is a single exit, meaning you don't have this second exit port, you're done. That's all there is. But if you opted for the dual exit can, you still got a little bit of work to do. You got to plumb this guy in. And the way you do that is you actually need to drill a hole in your intake tube right here on top and you're going to use a 3 8 drill bit and then a 1 quarter inch NPT tap to put threads in the hole and then you'll screw this in and you'll be able to have another place for your second outlet to vent to. I'm just going to use a drill press because it's a lot easier to drill my hole. The hole is drilled. All I gotta use is the tapper to put some threads in it. Now I tapped it and I can go ahead and screw this in. And the plastic was really soft. I could basically tap it by hand. So you don't need to really crank down on these things. I'm just gonna tighten this by hand. That's it. 
Doesn't need to be any tighter than that. And then you can come back and put your intake tube back on and then connect your hose from that new fitting to the second exit port. Don't forget to install your other check valve and then you are done. So to recap, we got our two exit ports. One is going to the connection on the middle of the intake manifold. The other is coming right here, which is what we drilled the hole for. Then we have our single input, which is coming from underneath the throttle body, underneath there. And then we have our clean side separator back here, which is connected to the one side of our intake tube. And then we have our other side of our intake tube completely blocked off. So that's it, not too hard. Once again, I'd like to thank Elite Engineering for providing the materials for this installation. Be sure to visit them online at their website, www.eliteengineeringusa.com. And always, thanks for watching and subscribe.